Kenyans want a democracy where the system of checks and balances works. I am a great believer myself in a system where there are robust checks and balances because that's the only way you can hold a government or an executive to account. And holding an executive or a government to account works for everybody. It works for the citizens, it works for the government because they are kept on their toes, and it works for the opposition as well because then they become part of success of a country. Uh, let me uh, wacha ni kujibu kwa Kiswahili jambo la gharama la maisha gharama ya maisha wacha ni jaribu Kiswahili mm. sio sanifu sana kama ya kule Tanzania lakini nitajaribu ya Kenya there wasn't any accountability the whole system went rogue and the people of Kenya do not want a situation where democracy is undermined democracy is um, uh, the system of checks and balances is undermined the history we have of the handshake is where there was a fusion of government and the opposition and the results were very disastrous for Kenya okay let me say the following on uh, the matter of DRC Eastern DRC and the challenges of security in Eastern DRC this is a collective concern of us as a region. The heads of state did take a decision that EAC must provide leadership in sorting out the challenges in Eastern DRC, especially after DRC joined the EAC. The good news, the positive news is that the last three month, the last one month has seen a lot of positive development around the challenge of security in Eastern DRC. Um, we now have um, joining the Kenyan forces that have been there for the last almost five, six months. Burundi have now come in. Uh, Uganda have now come in and uh, forces also uh, possibly from Angola have come to support the whole effort of stabilizing Eastern DRC, providing security for especially vulnerable people, um, ensuring that uh, there is, uh, we manage the challenges of security that continue to lead to loss of life, um, gender-based violence, and many other issues around children who cannot go to school and uh, uh, children that are displaced and hundreds of thousands of people that live in camps. Um, because of the build-up of uh, forces from different countries, there has also been generally a movement even by um, the armed groups in, in, in Eastern DRC to respect the cessation of hostilities, to also um, abide by the cantonment areas. We've seen a lot of movement in that direction. So we are confident that with this greater understanding and coming together, and, and I want to thank uh, um, the heads of state of ESC for providing leadership in this area. And we are working together to see to it that we stabilize Eastern TRC so that Congo can have uh, peaceful elections and they can continue to enjoy their country. On the issues of uh, Kenya, uh, thank you very much for asking. Um, we believe we are, we are a democratic nation. In fact, possibly the largest democracy in our region. And uh, we value, and we, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. 
I think he, he, he realized I was struggling. Um, as I said, we are a democratic country. We went into elections in uh, August last year. Um, highly competitive election, very peaceful election, the best acclaimed outcome ever, an election that um, uh, dealt uh, a big blow to ethnicity, that that election was devoid of any ethnic uh, uh, propaganda or any ethnic uh, persuasions. Kenyans voted, and the outcome of that election was acclaimed by all the people who went through that journey with us, including observers, both domestic and also foreign. Um, subsequently, um, somehow the opposition uh, after five months decided to make a claim that they were told by a whistleblower that possibly the results were different. They haven't uh, been good enough to tell us who the whistleblower is and how they arrived at a different set of results than one that were released by our Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. However, as I said on uh, Sunday, at, in times like this, it, it is not a question of who is right and who is wrong. In times like this, you have to put your house in order. And as president, um, I owe it to the people of Kenya to provide leadership and on Sunday I did ask the opposition to reconsider the demonstrations that they had undertaken because protests and demonstrations are provided for in our constitution but the protests and demonstrations were acquiring an ugly violent uh, turn that was destroying property, putting a lot of lives into risk, uh, causing a lot of unnecessary chaos, and it was time for them to reconsider those uh, demonstrations. I did offer them that whatever issues that they had, there was democratic, constitutional, legal channels of raising those issues using the platform of parliament in a bipartisan manner. And that is the um, offer I made to uh, the opposition. Uh, you asked me a direct question whether there will be a handshake because of this situation. I want to tell you there will be no handshake but there will be an engagement in Parliament on the issues that have been raised. Those that can, Parliament can resolve, they will be resolved. And when I say there will be no handshake, uh, I, I know that there is a context, you know, like we were being told here, please have a handshake. <laughs> Unfortunately for us in Kenya, a handshake has a different connotation. <laughs> and that is the one that I am talking about. Yeah. The handshake that brings the opposition and government into some conundrum and a mongrel and an outfit that is undemocratic, unconstitutional, and illegal. We are a democracy. And in a democracy, it is underpinned by a system of checks and balances, where you have a government and an opposition. 
the history we have of the handshake is where there was a fusion of government and the opposition, and the results were very disastrous for Kenya. There wasn't any accountability. The whole system went rogue, and the people of Kenya do not want a situation where democracy is undermined, democracy is, um, uh, the system of checks and balances is undermined. Kenyans want a democracy where the system of checks and balances works. I am a great believer myself in a system where there are robust checks and balances, because that's the only way you can hold a government or an executive to account. And holding an executive or a government to account works for everybody. It works for the citizens, it works for the government because they are kept on their toes, and it works for the opposition as well because then they become part of success of a country. Uh, let me wacha uh, nikujibu kwa Kiswahili jambo la gharama la maisha gharama ya maisha wacha nijaribu Kiswahili sio sanifu sana kama ya kule Tanzania lakini nitajaribu ya Kenya um, gharama ya maisha ni changamoto la kitaifa na ni changamoto la kimataifa pia sio nchi zetu za bara la Afrika Mashariki peke yake ndio tuko na tatizo la gharama ya maisha kupanda ni tatizo la kimataifa sehemu nyingi duniani kwa sababu ya mambo mengi jambo la kwanza tuko na matatizo yaliyotukumba ya eh, pandemic ya covid-19 tukapata tena matatizo ya vita kule Ukraine na Russia tukapata tena na matatizo makubwa ya climate change kwa mfano Kenya mwaka uliopita eh, magala yetu eh, tulikosa karibu eh, magunia elfu kumi, eh, milioni kumi, sorry karibu magunia milioni kumi ya chakula hayakupatikana kwa sababu ya mvua ambayo haikutosha na ni lazima tufikirie mbinu kama serikali ni vipi tutashughulikia tatizo hili tukiwa na changamoto za climate change kukosekana kwa mvua kuchelewa kwa mvua na mambo kama haya na vile vile kukosekana kwa mbolea ambazo tunatumia na ni vile tutashirikiana kuondoa kwa mfano um, yale matatizo tu nayo ya mipaka vizuizi katika mipaka yetu ambayo yanazuia chakula kutoka Rwanda kwenda Kenya kutoka Tanzania kwenda Uganda na eh, changamoto kama hizo na ni ndio sababu tuwe na maelewano kama yale tumeelewana hapa Rwanda ya uhusiano kati ya mataifa zetu ndio tuweze eh, kusaidiana pale panapotokea changamoto kama ile ya matatizo ya njaa kawaida kwa sababu sisi ni nchi za demokrasia kuna watu ambao wanachukua changamoto kama hizo na kuzibadilisha zikawa ni mambo ya siasa kama nafikiri umekuwa ufuatilia huko Kenya kuna watu siku hizi wanavaa kofia juu ya kichwa wanavaa sufuria <laughs> na nimejaribu kuwauliza hii ni hii ni mbinu gani ya kuzalisha chakula ukiweka sufuria juu ya kichwa sijui itasaidia kwa njia gani kuzalisha chakula na kuondoa njaa lakini ndio ndio hali vile wewe mwenyewe ulivyosema ndio hali ya mambo Um, again, to uh, maybe uh, speak to uh, the issue raised about open skies, I think President 
Kagame has responded to you very well. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. We will have a, the reality of connecting our airlines and possibly even having one regional airline that will connect our capitals, our, our, our nations, and to be able to provide easy movement of people, ideas, goods, services. That's really where we are heading, especially as President said, in the context of Africa continental free trade area, that is where we are all going. The challenge we have in our region and in our continent is that of connectivity. We've met the first step to improve connectivity in communication. That's why we have one area network with Rwanda. It is our belief that the other uh, East African countries will come along as a building block towards reaching even where we are thinking on how we can bring our uh, space uh, into one area, have a regional airline, I think there are already consultations between Kenya Airways and South African Airways. There is possibility of consultations with Uganda Airlines, and I'm sure further down the road with all the other airlines in our region so that we can uh, make the um, skies of our countries uh, one area and be able to move our people and services uh, faster and much more frequently. On the subject uh, my good friend uh, said about Mr. Anango, you said something about what? Yes. Sure. Okay, yes. Yeah, the, the incentive of US investors. In any case, the in incentive I announced uh, last week are not just for American investors. And I said it very clearly when I announced those uh, incentives. They are for business, whether they are Kenyan, whether they are from Rwanda, whether they are from East Africa, or they are from the US or indeed any other part of the globe. We are continuously um, raising our, the bar on investment in our region. Um, to be able to make sure that we attract investment into our region. It's, it's, it is the reality that our own taxes can take us so far. Foreign direct investment becomes another avenue of attracting resources so that we can grow opportunities, we can grow our economies, we can grow jobs for our young people apart from what we are doing nationally, using our own taxes, apart from what we can do with money that we can access from multilateral agencies, there is huge opportunity if we can also attract foreign direct investment. It is an avenue for growth of the economy, for growth of job opportunities, business opportunities, entrepreneurship, and it all works together not for the American farms, not for the European farms comes to invest in our region. It is the benefits we get with the jobs, with the investment opportunities, with the services, with goods that are manufactured in, this, uh, in these areas. And for your information, many of the goods that will be uh, produced by some of these investments are goods that will also earn us foreign exchange when they are exported to different destinations globally. So we have many companies in Kenya, for example, uh, One Health uh, Revital in Kilifi that exports to 28 countries in, uh, in the world. And it is an investment from an American uh, company combined with a Kenyan uh, company and uh, a, a, a collaboration with with other entities. So these investments must be understood in that context. I know um, narratives are always created uh, around uh, these investments uh, politically, but this is the background that I have shared with you.
Thank you, sir. I think we've come to the end.